good morning students so today we continue with the same chapter that is population now before we begin in the last class we understood the meaning of population we came across several terms like optimum population overpopulation underpopulation etc we learned that human beings are an important resource and their existence of is of immense importance to the earth their existence cannot be undermined today we are going to learn about the distribution of population and we will be learning it and seeing where there is a concentration and where there is a scattering what is the trend of the scattering and concentration and this map will tell us where exactly we are having a very high concentration and it will explain where we have very low population so as you look at this map and see the different colors you can understand that countries like india china some parts of europe the concentration of population is very high here also in the northeastern part of usa we find that concentration is pretty high however there are some areas which are marked gray all this lies in the northern part of the northern hemisphere all these tell us that concentration of the population is only in a few selected areas it is not everywhere in the entire continent some areas like in india the brahmaputra ganga valley and basin we find that population concentration is very high in the northeastern part of usa also we find that concentration of population is pretty high however areas like the sahara the amazon rainforest these areas are almost uninhabited so the distribution of population is influenced by various factors which may be physical factors and also some non physical factors now physical factors are determined by nature the non physical factors are on the other hand products of human activities and are also known as human factors so let us first concentrate on the physical factors so physical factors include landforms climate soil water availability and mineral power resources so when we talk about physical factors we find that landforms play a very important role plains have highest concentrations of population due to the flat land which is suitable for agriculture industry and transport facilities on the contrary 
mountains and plateaus have considerably low concentration of population. As far as climate is concerned, we find that extremely cold regions or extremely hot regions have very thin population. So the regions that do not receive much rainfall like deserts are thinly populated while regions with moderate rainfall and moderate temperature are heavily populated. You can see this in the map. The concentration of population is very high. These dark colors shows that more than 250 people live on an average in one square kilometer area. Soil also play a very important role in supporting large population. Our civilizations which have been cradling, they have all been cradling or cradled wherever there are big rivers, very big long rivers because all these rivers have been responsible in bringing huge amount of soil with them, depositing them over here and they have been responsible for early civilization, be it the Indus Valley civilization, the Ganges, the Chinese civilization, here we have the Mesopotamian civilizations which were cradled by the river Tigris and Euphrates and who can forget the Egyptian civilization which was developed along the river Nile. Water plays a very important role in our day-to-day -day life and Water is a basic necessity of human, human beings. So it's quite natural that settlements will always develop wherever there are water sources. Thus areas having abundant supply of water are densely populated while arid regions like deserts are thinly populated. Areas that are very rich in mineral resources and power resources support a large population. The discovery of minerals have encouraged people to move from one place to another. This has happened almost everywhere in this entire world but the most important among them has been the gold rush which occurred during the time of early 1930s when people discovered gold fields in North America that is in parts of California in the Coolgardley and Carl Goldley gold fields in Australia and in South Africa. Australia for a long time had been uninhabited but these discoveries of gold deposits led to a sudden rush of population to these areas which would have remained un underpopulated otherwise. 
So as far as the non-physical factors are concerned, there are several non-physical factors which lead to the population to concentrate in some areas. They include socio-economic factors. Now socio-economic factors are concerned with the interaction of social and economic factors. For example, a person's position in the society is based on how much money he makes. So all those places where proper economic factors are available and people can make best use of these if they have the quality, they will surely move and settle in such areas. As far as cultural factors are concerned, it refers to the customs, ideas, beliefs of a country or a society. For example, how well a place is connected with art, music, literature makes the city a hub for cultural activities. So people who are having a knack for all these cultural ideas or beliefs, they will flock to such places where their ideas can be given wings. Political stability is very, very necessary for the development and concentration of population because it is concerned with how well the country or a place is being governed, whether the government is stable or not, because wars, chaos in the governance, famine always repel people from settling in such areas. This is true with many African nations where most of these countries where the governance is not very stable have led to bloody wars, many a lot of bloodshed and this has not allowed many people to concentrate in these areas. Countries like Sudan are a recent example of this kind of bloodbath which occurs in such countries which lead to large-scale repelling of the population. Apart from this, educational facility, health care, employment opportunities provide a decent living, always attract people to settle and thus increase the concentration of population in those areas where education, health care and employment opportunities are better. Now because of this we find that some places have become centers of religious and cultural activities that attract the people from all over the world to these areas. Thus cities like Tokyo, New York, Mumbai and Bangalore are very crowded because they are centers of industry and commerce. 
while Varanasi is crowded because it is a center for religion, learning and arts. As most of the world's land is in the northern hemisphere, this hemisphere has got more people than the southern hemisphere. We can see it in the map which we have seen in the first slide. We find that here we have the equator. We find that there is more land in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere. That is why there is more concentration of people in the northern hemisphere compared to the southern hemisphere. And the pie chart which is being displayed on your screen tells us what is the amount of population in each and every continent. So if you look at the pie chart closely, you will find that Asia is having a considerably large population compared to all other continents put together. 60.11 percentage of the present population reside in Asia. And you can go through this statistics and understand what is the percentage of population in each of the continent. Before we conclude, I would like to draw your attention to a term which I have used in the last class and that is optimum population. Now in a perfect world, every country would have had an optimum population. But this is very, very rare. And we find that most of the countries are suffering from either underpopulation or overpopulation. Nevertheless, a country with a lot of resource can hold a larger population and at the same time maintain a good standard of living if its resources are fully utilized. So I hope students you have understood what we mean by distribution of population and what are the reasons behind this specific distribution of population. That is what we have to study for today. I hope you must have enjoyed the program, the PPT which we have made. Thank you.